Today we're going to be talking about the HairWorks authoring pipeline and in regards to that what your workflow looks like going from Maya or 3ds Max to the HairWorks viewer where you can tune and iterate on your asset in real time and get results pretty quick. What we're looking at here is the Mandelodon. This is an asset that exists both in Maya and 3ds Max as source material and this is what we'll be working with for our tutorial today. Um, what you're looking at right now is the final result with glorious amounts of fur strands on them and you can see we've got a lot of nice secondary motion um, really accents the character and so we're going to take you from point A to point B with this today. The first thing we want to talk about is asset preparation and how you should go about preparing your mesh for hair works and how to put fur on it. In this case we've got our skinned character is our high resolution graphics mesh and as you can see we're, we're a pretty detailed model. We've got a lot going on in the face, high detail around the eyes, we've got a tongue and teeth and tusks and all that stuff. The goal for a growth mesh, which is standard in a lot of hair and fur pipelines, is that you want to water down the mesh to a, a uniform density and you also want to remove areas that you know are not going to have or ever need fur strands. And the reason you want to do these things uh, having a uniform mesh not only helps with the grooming process and makes that a little bit easier, but it also helps with the shadow calculations and also the fur density in, in hair works because the hair curves are interpolated between the faces. If you want uniform density, then your, your faces need to be as uniform as possible. And in removing high detail areas such as the eye sockets and the mouth, we know we're not going to want fur in there and it's going to make the grooming process uh, a lot simpler to just remove fur from those areas. And it's, all se it's also sending less triangles through the fur pipeline. But you don't want to remove so much to where you're going to run into problems with shadows. So you do not need a water watertight mesh for hair works. It can deal with, with open meshes. However, if you're not planning for where those holes are, then you may get holes in your shadow map because the growth mesh is also used to help with the shadow map. So to demonstrate some of the changes that we've done, I'll go back in the wireframe mode, open up my layers, and what I'm going to do is hide my graphics geometry and unhide the growth mesh. And you can see here what I've done on the eyes is I've just stitched them closed and removed a lot of the geometry around there. So it's still going to deform and it's still there for the purposes of shadows, but there's an eyeball there normally, and, and so the shadow's not going to cast out the eyeball, obviously, but it's going to hit all the skin. The other thing I've done is gone and removed the gums and the tongue and, and the inside mouth cavity, because um, I'm not too concerned about shadow casting in this region, and it's, it's not going to have too many implications uh, over hitting the body or anything, so it was just safe to get rid of all that stuff. As an option, what you could do, if, if there is a concern, is you could just bridge all these polys and then give them some unique UVs off in the corner of the texture map somewhere. So let's look at these next to each other for comparison purposes. So I'll just go ahead and I'll move the growth mesh over off to the side. So you can see the detail here in my, my growth mesh versus the graphics mesh and then of course the mouth. Then some other areas of subtle difference. You can see the neck is treated a little bit different. Everything's just relaxed a little bit more. Um, again, this helps with the grooming process and also the interpolation of the hairs. And so now what we'll do is you want to make sure that your skinning envelope is the same between your two meshes, that way the, the deformation is the same between this mesh and your graphics meshes. And at this point we can move on to talking a little bit about grooming. Let's talk a little bit about grooming on the 3DS Max side. We're going to use a grooming solution um, that's built right in the 3DS Max and it's called the Hair and Fur modifier and it's it's pretty similar if not identical to shaving a haircut on the Maya side 
again, we're using a third-party grooming solution because it's it. There's plenty already out there, and there's no need to reinvent the wheel with grooming. Uh, the HairWorks component is mainly about the behavior and and look of of fur in real time, and when you can already groom this stuff in in your DCC packages, it just makes sense to stain on the shoulders of of those successes. So what we want to do is utilize the growth mesh that we prepared earlier and we want to go over some some basic grooming. If you want to get really in deep with, with learning how to groom and, and get used to it, just have a look at the, the Autodesk site or the 3ds Max help. There's, there's plenty of tutorials out there on, on good techniques on grooming. The basic gist of it is you can have a maximum of one guide hair per vertex of the growth mesh. And then we want to take the curves that the hair and fur modifier produces and export those to a line shape. And then HairWorks can reference that with the growth shape to create um, fur from. So the quick and dirty version of putting fur onto a character goes a little something like this. We want to go ahead and hide the graphics mesh. And we can go ahead and, and hide the tusks and eyeballs and stuff too. And then let's have a look at the growth mesh. It has the same set of skinning envelopes and max skinning influences, which is four, as the main version. And what we want to do is just go into our modifier list and pick hair and fur, which is a world space modifier right here. And it's going to give us a bunch of furs, a graphical representation, which we don't really need for hair works. So what we're going to do is go ahead and turn those off and turn on the important thing that we want to deal with, which is display the guides. And because we have a pretty high detail mesh, even though we've already slimmed it down, there is quite a bit of guide hairs to deal with. However, there is plenty of tools to make this manageable with the hair and fur modifier. So to go over this quickly, we're going to go into style hair and we're going to use our scale brush. Actually, first what we'll do to get this done a little quicker, we're going to hit attenuate. And what attenuate does is adjust the length of each, each guide hair based on what it thinks is best for the mesh, which sometimes works out and sometimes doesn't, but it gives you a pretty good head start. So I'm going to hit that twice, and you can see we've already got something pretty reasonable on our character. I'm going to turn the wireframe off so we got something a little nicer to look at. And also, even though we got rid of areas that we didn't want for with like the mouth and stitching the eyes together, we, we still needed those for shadow purposes and, and just have a cleaner, fuller mesh. Um, we don't want hairs on some of these regions of the face or the feet. So what I'm going to do is just go and scale those, scale those areas down. Another way to do this would be to use the cut brush, right? right here. However, if you use the cut brush, it doesn't completely remove the curve, so you'd still get interpolation from uh, pretty much no curve to some curves, and we don't want any fur at all. So what we're going to do is just kind of just scale it down and, and get rid of stuff. I'm going to do the same thing for the feet, but a quick trick to do this with is to go in the profile view, turn off distance fade, and then I can kind of get both at once. And then I'm just going to make these a little shorter here, a little shorter here. I want my tail to be shorter. But we, we were referencing a uh, lion and wolves and, and animals of that nature for this character. So he's going to have a big mane. He's not going to have a lot of hair along the rib cage, so we can see the muscle definition around there, the stomach and the thighs. But we, we do want a lot of the collarbone, the chin, and the tail. So I'm going to go ahead and puff some up on the tail a little bit. I'm going to bring it down a little bit in the lower back, some up there, and we can kind of go into this region and bring them down. We'll go into full perspective mode for this area, and bring that up a little bit. And we did want some on the chin, and you can see that I already removed that, but what I can do is go into selection mode and select by roots. And then I can pop up the selected curves back to normal and kind of get them back. 
and go back into my styling and then just kind of tweak them from there then what we we'll want to do is select them all and we want to do some basic grooming so uh, to get this going right away I'm just gonna grab the translate brush and just kinda drag stuff around and you can see I'm going right through the mesh well that's not necessarily the best thing because I don't want hairs penetrating the mesh that's gonna cause problems during deformation you might end up with some bald spots because there's hairs in a spot but they're just kind of going through the character in the wrong way so to help that out in the grooming process what we can do is go over to the dynamics panel and let's get out of style mode and we're gonna turn our collisions onto polygon and we just want to go ahead and use our growth object if we wanted to add some other objects uh, to help with collision and grooming then we can go ahead and add them here for our purposes the growth object is going to be fine so now when I go back to styling and I start pulling these things around you can see that the guide curves are colliding with the character so this is going to help us keep from getting uh, unwanted penetration issues now before we get too far into moving these hairs around we can use something built into the modifier called combing so if we comb the brush or comb the character it's going to go ahead and push these curves in a direction that it feels is best for the character which gets us like 70 percent of the way there actually so then we can go in and we can grab some tips and just kind of rearrange things a little bit so I want these hairs going this way instead of over his eyes and then I can hit recomb again oops that was the attenuate button we don't want that we'll undo it so just recomb it and it's going to kind of learn a little bit and give us a little bit better comb now for the hair work stuff we don't want the furs sticking along the surface of the character this closely even in visual effects this may also create a little bit of a problem during deformation so what we want to do is stand them up just a little bit so that the furs can fall in place and, and hug the character using backstop collision and this will just be a little bit more effective and it gives your, your furs a little bit more freedom to move around so to do that we're going to go over here to the puff up roots and just pop up the bottoms a little bit and so about this much is good and then in some cases for this particular character we want the tips to stand up too particularly in the main so we can go to stand up and we'll just stand these suckers up and then we can use stiffness to hold them there during the simulation now in using backstop for hair works this is very similar to how clothing works in that you'll have a series of spheres that are placed under the mesh creating a wall which pretty much approximates what the growth mesh is and this is uh, a, a very approximated version of, of what clothing does so this is a basic rundown of the grooming process and to get to our final groom that we have for our character I'm going to go ahead and use a tool called recomb from splines so what I want to do is unhide my comb shape that I previously created and I can recomb all of our groom based off of these splines so now I've got our final groom and all I need to do is export this to some splines or a line shape and then feed this into Hairworks. So with my hair and fur modifier selected, I'm just going to hit guides the splines. And then I can turn off the hair and fur modifier. I'll go into my visibility, turn off my comb. Now I've got my line shape. Um, just to help keep my scene a little clean, I'm going to go ahead and name this Hair Guides. Just makes things easier to find later on. And now we can go in and we can add our Hairworks node. All right, now that we've got our mesh prepped and our guide hairs converted from the, the groom, we're going to go in and we're going to add our Hairworks node. So we'll select the growth mesh 
And the growth mesh can also be the graphics mesh, but in this case we, we did a lot of work to make a specific growth mesh without this extra detail. Um, so we're going to go ahead and add our hair works node to it. This is typically the same mesh that the hair and fur modifier went on. So we'll go to our hair works menu and do create hair works. And it puts it right underneath the hair and fur modifier. And as you can see, it's it's pretty simple. All we need to do is transfer a little bit of data over to the HairWorks viewer or to the game engine. And the things that we care about are uh, the growth mesh, the skinning envelopes associated with that growth mesh, the guide hairs, um, how to sample the guide hairs, or how many CVs or knots that we want to use on them. And that's about it. So we're going to go ahead and pick the guides. And this is just a pick button. So we've picked our shape, and you can see the button is updated to say hair guide, so it gives us our, our node. And then we'll go ahead and leave resample guides at four. This is pretty good for fur. You generally don't need more or less for fur. Uh, if something's a little bit longer, then maybe you can go up to five or six, but four is, is pretty good, and that's going to be the most efficient use case for fur. So now that we've got our hair nodes set up, uh, what we're going to do is go ahead and export out our file, um, both an FBX and an APX format, and there's a difference between the two. So we'll go ahead and export out our FBX first, and I'm just going to export the entire scene. And we'll go ahead and export out our Mangelodon 2 FBX and the options that we want set you want your smoothing groups tangents and binormals and then you want your animation data included with the uh, skinning deformation and we're going to go ahead and export our scene at centimeters because the scene was made in centimeters and we want Z up Now the FBX file for a viewer is, is strictly so that you can tune your fur against what you would tune in a game engine. So um, it would be the same as, say, a skeletal mesh in UE3 or UE4, or um, a character in, in other game engines. So you can put materials um, and textures onto that mesh to help you tune your fur in, in context. Um, this platform you can view inside the viewer and all of that stuff as well. So now we just want our APX file, and our APX file, again, just contains the growth mesh, guide hairs, uh, the resample, and the scene scale. So what we'll do is we'll go to Export, and we're going to go down and select HairWorks APX. I'll just change the name here to Demo. And then we're going to get our export unit scale so this scene was done in centimeters um, and the rest of my pipeline is also in centimeters so I'm going to go ahead and leave that at 1.0 and say OK and then from here we can take our assets into the HairWorks viewer and tune all of our all of our attributes